so food manufacturing facility, flooring and ceilings and walls. Mm -hmm. um, my regulations say I've got to have imper impermeable flooring with trapped drains. If it's concrete, it's got to be sealed. Mm -hmm. And the hive and the honeybee cautions against wax. You need to consider wax build up in your in your traps and your drains well it's farther than that and i'm glad you brought that up um and i'm gonna show you when we walk out in the warehouse i'm going to show you a hundred foot stretch of concrete with a different color piece of concrete down you know where i'm going with yeah. this we had uh and we've got some serious drains in this building and i didn't know i didn't think about it we were wash, and we still do we wash wax down the drain and uh, we had one long, long stretch of pipe that got clogged, and we absolutely could not get it out. We, we had the Roto-Rooter man here. We got the commercial jetter guy here, and, and we couldn't get it unclogged, so we had to dig up the floor and put down a new stretch of pipe. And so we have our own jetter system here, a small, that's going to be confusing to some viewers, a jetter is where you take very high pressure water and force it through a very small nozzle. And the tip we use has, you know, uh, it's almost a rotating tip with very hard, I mean, if, you, if it hit your skin, it'd drill a hole in you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to touch it. And we run that down through our pipes with this thing going around and it breaks the wax through and, uh, you know, runs it through. And your worst, the biggest mistake that people make is running, and this is where steam and hot water can get into trouble. When you're cleaning equipment, the hotter the water that you're running down the floor drain, the more damage you're doing because all those soft wax particles are sticking to each other and sticking to the pipe. Yep. If you can get away with it, the best way to wash things down the floor drains is with cold water because that way they're not sticky. In fact, the colder the better because they don't the wax and propolis and all that garbage doesn't stick to each other and hmm. we had to learn that lesson the hard way hmm. i've got a friend that manages uh, service departments for john deere dealerships and i was talking to him about it he said he's got oil separators that they have mm -hmm. to have in their drains yeah and I, I wonder if there's something like that that could be done with wax you mean try in, to, the, in the know, floor drain? Yeah, try to catch the wax before you know it gets what? into the pipes. There probably is because a lot of restaurants have grease traps. Yeah, yeah that, that something along those lines. Of course, in the middle of a warehouse floor, yeah. you know, that'd have to, you'd have to engineer and think about that. Yeah. Something um, to think we about. We actually have a huge, we have a monster uh, septic system here. We are on our own septic systems. If it's okay, I'd like to talk about septic systems a sure. little because that's a, people make a big mistakes there. I've made one. Had to learn it the hard way. Our system has 360 feet of leach line. Um, wouldn't mind having more, but that's how big it is. And then we have three tanks. One is the, where it catches all this garbage. And the next one is for solids. You know, all the toilets and stuff flow into that. The first one flows into it also. All the floor drains flow into the first tank. And then that tank and all of our toilets flow into the second tank, which would be you know, a normal septic tank. And then beyond that, we have a, a fluids tank. Uh, many septic fields flow out of your main tank and the fluids go into your leach field. Ours actually flows into a very large tank. It's like a, it's like a firewall in case the middle tank overflows. No solids of, of any kind yeah. can get into our leach field. We have a huge field. And uh, uh, at the last honey house I had, um, our leach line completely plugged up just went solid like a cork i mean wow. we had water coming up out of the ground out at the end of our leach field and uh couldn't figure that out so we dug into it we didn't remove it we just tapped into it and put in more leach field line at the end of our existing line and that worked great and i was talking to the guy that put in our field he's kind of a friend of mine and i said uh yeah, he said, I said, well, how did we do this? I mean, you know, what's the problem here? And he said, well, you, uh, the worst uh, offense for septic fields is dead microbes. They clog, the, it just pastes the walls of everything and nothing can flow through it. Hmm. And I thought about that and I said, D dead microbes. Guess what kills microbes? Hmm. Honey. If you're flushing mass quantities of honey down your septic field, 
you're killing it. It's acidic. You're killing all the microbes in there. You can flush all the Ridex you want down the drain, but you're just neutralizing it with mass quantities of honey. So we're actually very careful of not, like if we have a spill, we try to clean it up and pick it up and not necessarily wash, you know, 55 gallons of honey down the floor drain. I, I think that's a tip that if you don't have 30 or 40 years experience, you're just not going to know that going into, into that it. One, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Septic fields. Nobody <laughs> thinks of that. Yeah. So you guys clean a lot of honey off of the floor in here. What's the what's the best way to do that? Hot water. We do not use detergents. We do not use bleach on our floor. Uh, the inspectors are quite happy with that. Um, if we're really going to clean the floor, we have a once a week deep clean and they'll put a little bit of simple green which is kind of an organic yeah. soap in the in the mop water and mop everything down but uh, throughout the week we just kind of use hot water and uh, we have a funny little saying here and it's really true if you uh, touch a drop of honey it's going to follow you around the rest of the day so I've really pounded into their heads in there if there's a drop of honey on the floor don't walk past it. Please, please lean down and wipe it up because before long you'll wonder why the whole floor all over the place is sticky just from one little uh, spot of honey. So clean, clean, clean. It, it's a mantra for us out there. And when you, when you walk in the room, you're going to be surprised at how clean it is. You literally could eat off the floor, no joke. And that's just the way we keep it. Do you, do you use a steam cleaner for that? Or? No, some people do. Um, some commercial beekeepers use steam cleaners on honey processing uh, equipment because it cuts the wax mm -hmm. better than just hot water. But we have some pretty hot water. Yeah. Um, we have uh, the hot water heater that's driving the processing room is uh, set at 145, which is hot enough to cut wax if you just have a pretty good stream of water. Um, the the hot water on the retail side is set at 120 because we don't want any of these bathrooms or yeah, to scald or, anyone. Yeah, we don't want to scald anybody. But the people in the processing room know to be careful with that hot water, and the hot water that drives that uh, floor is 180 degrees. That's some pretty hot water, and it actually goes back. It, it services the sink back in the corner back there too, but them boys know to be very careful with that. And if they have to clean something that's really got a lot of wax on it, they'll use that extremely hot water. You have to wear a glove. You can't hold on to the nozzle because the nozzle gets too hot. Yeah. But back to steam cleaning <clears throat> for cutting the wax and debris on extractors and you know wax separators and things like that, uh, that's really the best way to go. We just haven't done that in this building because of the type of facility it is. So <clears throat> ceilings and walls and, oh, yeah. and all that, what... Um... I mean, where where do you have to find a contractor that is familiar with building restaurants to get this stuff, or no? Or what? Um, our inspector says no surface can be porous. Any wood has to be covered in enamel paint, not flat paint. You won't allow flat paint, and rightfully so. Uh, enamel is what you can wash. Every surface has to be washable, cleanable, not porous, and that's not hard to do. Um, you know, seal your cement and paint your wood. It's really as simple as that. Um, our walls are uh, plywood. I thought about going with polyethylene panels, and which is legit. You see those in dairies a lot, mm -hmm. and that's legit. But what, what you're going to see out here is we have uh, viewing windows into our processing rooms, and I wanted to paint the rooms and make them look nice, and they are. Two-tone paint job. They're very attractive. And uh, we used uh, ply, well, just wood plywood and painted them really nice and put a good acrylic enamel uh, surface on them and I've not been unhappy with that at all. They don't take bumping and bashing, you know, like polyethylene panels would, or poly, might be polypropylene. Anyway, you can, see, you can find those, they're four by eight sheets or four mm -hmm. by 10 sheets that you can put on the wall. And if you're not trying to be pretty and beautiful, that might be the proper <laughs> way to go.